Resor, Mr. Resor is Chief Financial Officer of Gross Solar in White River Junction, Vermont. Gross Solar is a national leader in solar energy, leading customers to beat global warming by using solar energy to power their home and businesses. Mr. Resor is here to testify on behalf of the Solar Energy Industries Association, SEIA, is the National Trade Association for the Solar Industry. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Ranking Member Shabbat, uh, other members of the committee and the staff as well. Um, again, I'm Jamie Resor with Grow Solar. Um, we are an active uh, participant in the solar industry, active in more than 40 states uh, throughout the country. Um, and we focus on the installation of photovoltaic systems to generate electricity for homes and businesses. Um, some examples to put this in more layperson's terms are clearly obviously residential homes is a key part of our market, uh, municipal buildings, schools, stadiums, uh, resorts, uh, multi-residential complexes, um, agricultural operations are just some examples of the kinds of customers that we have that are using uh, sol solar photovoltaic systems to generate electricity. Um, one thing is it's important to keep in mind is that solar clearly off in the U.S. when people think of solar they think of California, uh, which is natural. That's where about 75 percent of the market is. But I think it's important to realize that it's a broader opportunity. Our company is based in Vermont. Uh, the Northeast, for example, is a very important area for uh, solar, partly because electric rates are very high, and that's probably the most that is the most important determinant as to where solar. Uh, can make sense at the residential and commercial level. So states like New York State, um, Massachusetts, and Connecticut are uh, going to be very big growth areas for solar in addition to a California um, and places like that. Um, the one thing I wanted to focus on really today is we've heard a lot, and uh, I concur, there are a lot of environmental benefits to wind and solar energy, a lot of these ener energy efficiency steps that we've heard about in terms of diversifying energy supply, reducing energy consumption, and that's all very true. Um, in addition, solar has the uh, advantage it can be a distributed source of energy. So it doesn't need to be um, put pressure on transmission lines or other choke points in the distribution grids. In fact, we're working with NSTAR uh, utility in Massachusetts uh, just for that reason. They have congestion and they either can spend a lot of money to upgrade substations or for better distribution, or they can try to um, bring out about a program which reduces consumption in certain parts of their grid and increases the generation of, of things like solar, which can be done at the, at the point where you need it instead of a central power station. Um, but what I wanted to focus on today is given the committee's mandate to really underscore the importance of job creation. Uh, we are sort of somewhat of a microcosm of what you're seeing in the green economy. In the last two years, we've gone from about 25 employees to approximately 100 employees. We've raised $50 million of investment capital who see the opportunity uh, to back us. We've set up a national out, um, platform for our company, uh, whereas we were just based in the Northeast a couple years ago. Um, not only that are we a small business, but our customers um, that we often sell product to and give design assistance that are the ones doing the installation in many states. They are all small businesses. Um, like Mr. Rima represented, we will work with electrical contractors, for example, or plumbers, um, or other construction people to actually do the implementation of a solar system. Um, so if I look at our customer base, which is, say, 300 to 400, they are all small businesses and privately held. So they're very much a ripple effect in how this, uh, what this committee does uh, for this legislation. Um, secondly, um, when, even when we do larger commercial projects, for example, we did a solar hot water system for Fenway Park in the Boston <coughs> Red Sox. Um, we've done other projects for uh, a winery um, in rather large uh, multi-residential firms. It might be 800 kilowatts to me one megawatt in multiple states. Again, when you look at the sub, the, our partners who are involved in the implementation of those projects, they're all uniformly small businesses. Um, so again, there's a very important uh, ripple effect there. Uh, to cite the same Navigant um, study that Mr. Whetstone uh, cited for WIN, very comparable statistics. We're looking at the drop-off of or the loss of $8, $8 billion investment in 2009 alone 
and approximately 39,000 jobs that would, would not be created if the ITC for commercial and the personal tax credit for residential um, is allowed to expire. We're already seeing um, adverse impacts in terms of some of our customers because for businesses, uncertainty is a very difficult thing to manage. Um, so already people are wondering, what can I expect for 2009? So my, as I'm talking to customers about different potential for a project that can't get implemented this year just because it takes some time to design it and get it implemented, already we're seeing a lot of wondering, what is Congress going to do in terms of the ITC? Um, so we think it's paramount that the, the ITC be extended for, for the eight-year period and that we also have the, the um, personal tax credit for residential and that it be, um, you know, that the $4,000 uh, cap um, be eliminated as well to further stimulate um, job growth. Um, and thank you very much for your time and appreciate your interest in these issues.